apple of an eye. So fragile, so frail. Would I let anyone touch my eyes? But his eyes, should they be any different? Less important to me? Shouldn't Israel be as dear to my heart as she is to his? Has God not given her the name, the apple of his eye, because she is the most fragile, sensitive part of himself? An eye that needed to be covered, loved and protected? Or is it because Israel is not just the apple of his eye, but the very center of his heart? But the story I'm about to tell is really about you. You're sitting there in your country and you want to write the story of your life, but can't. What do you have to write about that's beyond your yesterdays? You're today, you're tomorrow. You want your life to tell a story that is bigger than you, but all the stories of your life seem so meaningless, insignificant. You come to a point in your life where you realize that you want to stop writing your own story. You want to write his story. You want to be what he wants you to be. You want to do what he wants you to do. Now you just can't stop from gazing into the endless eye of God, the apple of his eye. But why is it tearing? This most precious part of God is left so defenseless, alone, hurting, bleeding, cold and wet with tears. I see this global evil that brings back haunting memories of my time in the army. voices, a whole wailing wall of Jewish prayers, stacked up, piled as high as into the heavens, centuries and centuries of outcries. Now I look up and ask myself this one question. that gives me no rest why God has put us on this earth for such a time as this. What is God saying to you now? I believe there's a sacrifice here in everyone's life and the fire is on us. Finally, we will, walking, we will be walking up to the Temple Mount and bringing the offering from the nations to our Lord. This is the land that he gave us, but it's on condition that we learn to honor the God of Israel. The, the question that continues to echo in my head, and I'm listening, looking for an answer. In that quest, I met Jan Willem van der Hoven, the director of ICZC, the International Christian Zionist Center to personally hear and see who is the man behind 
the vision. It started in a stable. He didn't come to a palace. But when he comes back, he will not come to Bethlehem. He will come to the most beautiful, magnificent temple house built for him that Ezekiel describes. The church started on one side when the Holy Spirit fell. There were thousands of believers who came to him. And it's going to end on one side. Where it started, it's going to end. He's an ambassador taking ground everywhere he goes as an advocate on behalf of Israel all over the world. And Israel is already so small that you say, God, what has come into the mind of the Israelis? That will never depart from your heart. For it is only when you know why Israel, according to the Bible, is so important. They will not decide the future of Israel. The living God of Israel, who loves you, Hashomer shall Israel, the watchman. I remember then listening to Jan Willem for the first time with new ears, thinking to myself, this man is a man that God is really going to use for the Jewish people. Finally, here is someone so compassionate who comes from the nations and speaks to us with such clarity, passion and love. But what really struck me is the access and favor that this Christian leader has to such high-ranking government leaders in Israel. It is wonderful to have him here, and especially it is wonderful to have him in Jerusalem, representing Christian Zionists from all over the world. And I salute you, Jan Willem, for what you have been doing to help support the state of Israel. I have enormous respect for his principles. These basic fundamental principles that guide his life. He was bursting with excitement to take me to the heart of the places where the history of Israel was written and will be written again. This is Ir David. This was where our King David, they found now the palace of David. That's where the ark stood. So this was David's city right underneath there. And so when David woke up, he says, Lord, you are living in a tent, I'm living in a palace, you should be living there. So now that Ir David has been developed, this is all one big praise to God. I mean, it's going to be fantastic. And these people with great love have, have found the ancient walls. So no honest archaeologist or historian can deny this was the city of David. This was not the Palestinian or Quds where never Jews were. And it's very clear, you don't have to be an archaeologist to see it. You see it in your own eyes. You see what is the original history, the original foundation of this place. It's strategic places like Judea and Samaria that Jan Willem brings people from all over the world. The time is coming to support and encourage whole communities that are at the front lines. There they meet some of the key figures in Israel. Professor Moshe Sharon. Islam is a warring religion. It had the sword before it had the Quran. And the idea is to rule the world. Any territory which had ever been occupied by Islam is an Islamic territory forever. And therefore, I've got a message for Spain. If there are some Spanish people, they should know it. Spain is Andalus. And as far as the Muslims are concerned, it is going to become Andalus again if the Spanish people do not pay attention to it in time. This also includes Provence, Sicily. It includes Southern Italy. These were Muslim territories. I'm not talking about Israel. Beware Europe, you are on the way to becoming an Islamic country because there is one thing which you got to remember. There is an appeasement in Europe and there is political correctness which is killing it. 
Europe is the cancer, Islam is the answer. There is no such a word in the vocabulary of the Arabs. The word peace does not exist in the Quran. And neither is the word love as we know it. What is this hate to the Jews and to any non-Muslim that the Quran teaches? How can we deal with it? You know, it is really unbelievable. I just thought, here is a city that you would think everybody loves. With all the tourists here, where you can film them, everybody would love the city. No, no nation nearly has their embassy here. I don't believe there's been a connection of any people to any city as powerful, as durable, as long-lasting, as passionate as the connection of the Jewish people to their one city, Jerusalem. For the Bible says, all those that love Jerusalem will prosper. In this falling world, with all its economic fallout, and all the problems that this world faces, and all the disasters that still will come, God says, you want to bless, be blessed. Pray, care, comfort this city and this people, and I will comfort you with the comfort with which I will comfort this city. Listen, even if your nations will not have their embassy, you will have an embassy. The Jews have a center, they call it Jewish agency. The Christians also will have a center, Christian agency. There are nine million Jews in the world who through the Jewish agency plant trees, help hospitals. I said, now come on Christians, you're 10 times as many at least. If there are six million Israeli Jews, I can tell you, Without feeling I exaggerate, there are 60 million Bible-believing Christians from China to Peru, from Canada to New Zealand. Even if the last nation, America, will fall away, we will put our feet through this center on the land, and we will learn all the ways in which we can economically, media-wise, politically, prophetically, through praise and prayer, undergird this nation so that this nation will fall into the arms of God. I say, Lord, touch the people to rise up like an army. Please touch them. This center will be the agency that will find and gather the Bible-believing Christians worldwide. Those that know Israel and those that at this very moment do not even know that their destiny is directly tied to the future of Israel. Israel needs an agency that will train and inspire the 10 out of each nation that the Bible mentions to become an end-time force for Israel. This center, Emmanuel, it's the home. We say that the Jewish people were blinded. We today are blind. From what are we blinded? And what dire need is Israel facing in such a time as this? In the coming months, Iran will have the nuclear weapon. Stop and think for a moment if Ahmadinejad would be true to his words and use his nuclear warheads as he promised to annihilate Israel. Does Iran need to bomb the Jewish state in order to destroy Israel? Or is there a hidden plan that could bring an equal destruction? One we could not even begin to fathom, even if Iran will never use their weapons, which is what everyone hopes. Just the fact that they are in their possession will change the course of history. Once Iran has her nuclear weapons, the balance of forces in the Middle East will change entirely. Within days, a blanket of fear will be spread over the neighboring Arab countries, Egypt, Jordan, Saudi Arabia, and countries of the Persian Gulf will not have a choice but to cut off any and all alliances with the US. They will be forced to obey every command coming from the oppressive dictatorship of Iran. Everyone will know now 
who is calling the shots. The fear-paralyzed Islamic Middle East will now be sucked into becoming puppet nations of Iran. This has already transpired to Syria, Lebanon, and now even Turkey. It's actually the Iranian nuclear scare over the Arab nations that would be the greatest threat to Israel. Welcome, uh, President Barak. The Middle East will never be the same again. Any political decision that would not serve the complete interest of the Iranian government would be considered as a traitor to the new boss in the neighborhood. Iran will become the leader of the Arab world, the renewed Persian Empire. Now that the entire oil of the Middle East is controlled by Iran, America and Europe will be forced to do anything to appease Iran. When Iran threatened, at the time which I will decide, Europe will freeze in the winter. It was just a very small preview of the fear and panic that will terrorize all the nations of the world. Fears of energy crisis, fears of financial collapse, and of course, the fear of national security is what will enslave the leaders of every nation to Iran's demands. Will they choose the interest of Israel above their own countries? Do you think they will listen to the cries of the small Jewish state or they will choose to listen to the people they actually represent? Who would rather choose the destiny of Israel when the destiny of their own country is at stake? When they are subject to these words? No matter how much a president may hold Israel in the highest regard, he still won't have a choice. Israel will be a small price to pay for any leader of the world. So who will be there? The UN? Do you seek the destruction of Israel or don't you seek the destruction of Israel? I think I deserve an answer, sir. This is the United Nations. Next question, please. This is the United Nations and I think, sir, I deserve an answer. An answer. You're going to the UN. You're going to a house of lies about Israel. You're going to a house of darkness. And what you have to remember are two things. Who you represent and what you represent. You represent the Jewish people and you must speak the truth. And remember that in the largest hall, fully dark, if you light one candle, one candle, it dispels the darkness. Have we not also come into the kingdom just like Queen Esther for such a time as this to boldly petition before his throne of grace to save his people, Israel? There are people that I hope today will also be like her who say, no. Today I'm going to stand with the Jewish people. I've received my Messiah through them, the Apostles, the New Testament, and through their future, the world has any future at all, Emmanuel. And but it needs not theology, not just Bible study, it needs us to do to Israel what the Lord did for us. He became us. The Son of God became the Son of Man, and we have to become the Jewish people. Their people should be our people, and their God is already our God through Jesus. I want you to hold each of you a candle, a candle for truth. I want you to be the ambassadors of truth. I want to create a center. I want to say to the people, do you really want to know what it is that Israel needs, she needs a brother. Mm -hmm. Not a theologian, mm -hmm. not a preacher. She needs a brother. Can you understand? This nation bleeds from a thousand wounds. Especially like You know, this man was nearly in wrecks. He tried to help others that had been exploded by a suicide terrorist. And as he was trying to minister, he had left his car even running. Another terrorist came to all the people that had surrounded the victims of the first 
terrorist attack and blew himself up on him. It's a miracle to see him stand here. I had now an Israeli in my meeting in Rotterdam, and he whispered in my ear just before I spoke, Atta Yerushalmi, are you a Jerusalemite? After I spoke, I, I said to him, what are you doing here? He says, I have nothing to go back to. My parents sat in the bus in Jaffa that was attacked by a terrorist, and they were sitting together, dead. I have no brother, no sister, no wife. I fought in Hamas, and the whole world criticizes us. So I left everything. I looked at him. I thought, God, this is just one, one Israeli. The situation in Israel is very, very hard, very, very hard to live. But we have the, we have you to support us. We have you to give us love, to give us hope in whatever you can. Like young villain. What, what I felt is Israel is bleeding from so many. This is just one, I could repeat it, hundred thousand times over. People have lost their grandparents in the Auschwitz, lost their sons in the wars of Israel, or lost their parents in terrorist attacks. And what does the world do? Criticize, criticize, criticize. I says, when are we going to rise up as real brothers and say, Israel needs you to come with a bleeding heart and say, I'll do anything for you. Tell me, tell me how I can help you. Love your friend as you love as you love yourself. This is the whole Torah. That's what the center will do. To tell the millions of believers to be a force for Israel when America will be the last nation that will fall away from supporting Israel. Ever since Abraham, the heart of every Jew has reached and fall, reached and fall. 2,000 years, the jealousy of the nations have made them pay the price in blood and broken dreams. Should not we be the ones to rekindle their hope, to rekindle the beacons of Jerusalem? Should we leave the world to decide their fate? Will we linger any longer? Will we let them stand alone again and again? If not us, then who? near where north, south, east and west will turn their backs against God and his people. And remember that in the largest hall, fully dark, if you light one candle, one candle, it dispels the darkness.
Shouldn't our story have been more than we have become? Wasn't our story written before time was time, from when our eyes were still closed and our hearts were still open? In the place where the apple of his eye was looking at us, and it's still looking at us, Jerusalem, we are meant to worship with you. In one prayer, we'll look into the heavens and promise you, Judah, that for Zion's sake, we will no longer be at rest. And for Jerusalem's sake, we will never stay silent again. Look into the eyes of the young generation in Israel, the apple of his eye. But they are still waiting. For 2,000 years, we lay silent. But no more. Israel, we will be with you till the very end. If this movie has touched your heart and even moved you to tears, remember Israel's tears. Their tears are not evoked by a film, but rather tears where survival or surrender is their only option. The extreme fanaticism of Israel's enemies and Iran's end time strategy leaves us no more time to hesitate. To them, Israel's destruction is a push of a button away. You can be a deciding factor. The Christian Agency for Israel needs you to gather all the millions of Christians worldwide needed to counteract the many enemies of Israel. Go to our website and learn how you can become active ambassadors for Israel. When the day will come when Israel will be in dire need, she will find herself in the arms of her true friends. Go to IsraelMyBeloved.com and make your mark.